week, more than 200 top medical journals called our warming climate the world's greatest threat to public health. Makes you wonder who's listening or how much they're willing to do about it. Evidence is abundant. Heat-related deaths are occurring more often. Farms are producing fewer crops. Wildfire smoke obscures our mountains, keeping many of us inside and sending the vulnerable to hospitals and clinics. And researchers are not impressed with how governments are handling this situation. The journals note that targets are easy to set but hard to achieve. And importantly, though, they reject the notion that it's too late to stop the sky from falling. So tonight we are going in depth on climate change, how Colorado is addressing it and what we can do as individuals. Denver 7's Ivan Rodriguez leads our 360 coverage. Denver's hazy skyline this summer has managed to become a normal sight. Something these men can feel every time they get up and down the court. I get a lot lightheaded. Um, I feel more dehydrated than the days where the air quality is um, a lot better. Dante Stevenson has asthma, something he says has gotten worse along with the air quality. I've had to keep my inhaler with me. Um, usually don't really have to keep it on me um, unless I'm doing like physical activity. This basketball court in Wash Park is giving locals a small sample of what's being felt across the front range. So for example, our ozone problem in Colorado up until 2019, uh, our you know, summer ozone issues were actually getting progressively better and better. And that uh, completely turned around last year and uh, has significantly gotten, gotten even worse this year. Dr. James Crooks with National Jewish Health says part of the reason is the wildfire smoke from across the western U.S. But bad air quality is only one piece of a greater problem if climate change isn't addressed. It will be drying out the west and causing potentially even more severe water shocks than we've had. For people living on the eastern U.S., they'll have to deal with, you know, stronger hurricanes. It's these concerns that drew the attention of more than 200 medical journals to issue a joint statement urging world leaders to make policy decisions that cut back on emissions. If not, they warn of catastrophic harm to health that will be impossible to reverse. You know, once we can get past COVID, it will be the number one public health crisis and probably will remain that way for the rest of the century. Dr. Crook says climate change action is noticeable quickly in terms of better health. His hope, along with many others, is that 2021 is the year the world changes course before we set ourselves on a course that cannot be corrected. Ivan Rodriguez, Denver 7. But earlier this year, Colorado Democrats proposed an ambitious bill that would have created new rules for emissions, fined polluters, and regulated electric companies. It would have also led to someone being appointed to ensure communities are not being disproportionately impacted by smog. Governor Polis, who prefers voluntary compliance alongside incentives, said the proposal gave too much power to an unelected body and killed it by threat of veto. All of us can do something to address climate change, but none of us can do everything. On an individual level, you can help by driving less, buying sustainable products, or by ditching plastic. On a larger scale, researchers say we need governments across the globe to take immediate coordinated action to hold polluters accountable. Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson is our resident expert on climate change. And Mike, we have another hazy day around here. Indeed we do. As you can see in the skies behind me, and that is thick wildfire smoke. Now the ozone is invisible, but that is also high along the front range. We're going to see more smoke wave intensity days over the next 50 years. According to our friends at Climate Central, as the climate changes, we're going to see more of these days. We have the heavy smoke because of the increase in wildfires. All of this is connected, and frankly, folks, it's science we've known for four decades, if not much, much longer. The shrinking Arctic ice, the increased tropical activity, the wildfires, the heat waves, the droughts, all related to a warmer climate, hotter and drier weather, more big fires. There are some factors, uh, forestry factors, etc. Basically, hotter, drier means more fires and at higher ele elevations. And as the increase in carbon dioxide continues, we've warned about 2 degrees Fahrenheit in the last 140 years. Each molecule of CO2 kind of acts like a feather in a down comforter, trapping heat, redirecting, if you will, it would otherwise escape into space. And the world is getting warmer. Uh, the carbon dioxide also stays in the atmosphere for centuries. Matter of fact, the CO2 from the first Model T automobile is still in the atmosphere, trapping heat, causing the atmosphere to warm. What we do in the future as far as reducing the amount of CO2 put in the atmosphere from the burning of fossil fuels have a major impact on how much warming we see in the lives of our children and our grandchildren. 